President Trump has embraced House Speaker Paul Ryan's proposal to replace Obamacare, but one writer says Ryan's plan is catastrophically bad, and if Trump keeps following it, he will destroy his own political career for good. Ryan Salam is executive editor at National Review. He's also a columnist at Slate. In a recent piece, he wrote that the American Health Care Act would particularly hurt lower middle class people, the very voting bloc that handed Donald Trump the presidency. Meanwhile, it would help the wealthy by cutting their taxes. He says Trump ought to reject the bill post haste. Ryan Salam joins us tonight. Ryan, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for so having you me. put out the, 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 the there's a gulf, broad gulf, between what Trump ran on and the ideological agenda of the Republican leadership in the Congress. Is that kind of where it starts? I am going to tell you a secret, Tucker. Okay. There were a lot of Republicans, Paul Ryan included, who did not want Donald Trump to win. <laughs> That's I, for I, sure. This is going to be shocking news to you. And why is that? It's because Donald Trump challenged many of the core beliefs of folks like Paul Ryan on issues like immigration, of course, on national security, but also on the safety net. Donald Trump yes. said, I am going to defend the safety net for ordinary Americans, not because I believe in big government, but because nationalism isn't just divisiveness. Nationalism is also saying we are all in this together and we're going to look out for the weakest among us. That was a compelling message. That's been so undercovered. You know, it's a, the Access Hollywood tape, his views on the wall, th those took up all the ink. But his economic program was basically ignored, as was the gap between his beliefs and those of the Reagan protégés still running the Republican caucus. Well, you got to wonder, I mean, you know, why is it that Donald Trump, who said a lot of very controversial things, yes. why is it that he won the votes of almost 30 percent of Latinos? That's something that surprised a lot of people. Why is it that he won the votes of a lot of lower middle class, working class folks who never would have dreamed of voting for a Republican before? Right. It is because he was a different kind of Republican. Donald Trump isn't perfect, but one thing he definitely got right is that there's a big audience for that we're in this together politics. Yes. This health care bill does not reflect that. It does not. And actually, even in his interview with you earlier this week, you could tell that Donald Trump knows that. And he's saying that, look, you know, I'm going to want to protect our people. But the problem is that this bill, as it stands right now, here's what it does. You know, I might believe, you might believe that Medicaid is a, pro a program that's flawed. Yes. Uh, you know, I absolutely believe that. But you're going to cut $880 billion in Medicaid funding, and you're also going to cut taxes for rich people by $880 billion? It's one thing to say we're going to fix this program to make it more sustainable, to make sure that it serves people and what have you. But if in the same legislation you're also eliminating taxes for mostly rich folks by exactly that same amount, that doesn't send a good signal. You need to win people's trust. And that's what Donald Trump needs to do if he's going to build on his distinctive national agenda. So I, a lot of people I know assume this bill will not get through the Senate. It's not going to become law. It will not reach his desk. Let's just assume that's true. Even if it's not true, what should the president do with this bill? Look, I think that he needs to say we need to start over again. We need to go back to the drawing board and make sure that we have a program that is going to win broad support and that's going to be sure that vulnerable folks are not harmed first. And if he doesn't do that? If he doesn't do that, he's going to be in trouble. Uh, so here, here's the thing. Again, trust matters a whole heck of a lot in politics. There were a lot of people who were rattled by Donald Trump. They thought he was erratic here and there, but fundamentally in their gut, they felt like he's on my side. Yes. I trust him. So how do you establish trust? The way you establish trust is with the first actions you take. If the first action you take is cutting Medicaid while cutting taxes for the rich, who's going to believe you when you say that, hey, I want to be sure that everyone's taken care of. And you're right, I might want to cut taxes, but that's not my first and highest priority. My first and highest priority is protecting vulnerable Americans. We're almost out of time, but how did this happen? You know, I think partly it's because Donald Trump had a vision, and it's a vision that won him the presidency, but he doesn't have a lot of people around him who fully share that vision. Right. He has a lot of people who are basically old-school Republicans, the kind of people that a lot of voters rejected in the Republican primaries, who are the ones he's relying on. Now, he's a guy who thinks for himself, but he's also someone who needs to think harder about a disciplined plan to implement his agenda, not someone else's agenda. If this fails, it's going to be tough. It's, it's going to be really tough. It definitely will.